Hi, good to see everyone today. I'm Miss Castillo and I'm a seventh grade social studies teacher at Carroll Middle School. And today I'm gonna to be advocating for the use of the book Ken State by Deborah Wiles in the classroom. So um, the book Ken State is about the Ken State uh, protest shootings in May of 1970. And the book is framed as a conversation slash argument between uh, the different perspectives about the shooting. So the different perspectives are the protesters, the National Guard, and the townies, who are the people that were living in Kent, um, Kent Ohio during this time. So what makes this book a tough text and why would we be worried about using it? So this book is um, goes over some controversial themes which are still relevant to today's um, political climate as we've seen over the summer. So um, it's a very familiar theme about law enforcement and police brutality and um, government censorship of protests. So um, I think a lot of parents, depending on um, their feelings about protesting and um, the power of law enforcement, might think that this book is a bit um, political in a way, but um, I I would disagree that since it has so many different perspectives, it's not trying to be biased one way or another. It's just explaining the event and why it's significant and um, why we should talk about it more. So um, I think that the negatives of um, how this book could be perceived would definitely be outweighed by the impactfulness of um, what this book talks about. So again, why why would I teach this book? So I mean, although the book is about an event that happened almost 50 years ago, again, it's still very culturally relevant to today. Um, over the summer, we saw the Black Lives Matter protests and um, the police brutality that was displayed during these protests and um, just censor censorship in general. And this book um, really goes to show that, um, I guess we don't learn from our past. So um, Kent State, during the shooting, uh, four students were killed by the National Guard. And I think this is very similar to, um, although it wasn't a race issue that's talked about in this book, it's still about police brutality and um, law enforcement taking it too far when trying to shut down a protest. Um, I also think this book is really good to teach because it provides multiple perspectives on the event, which gives students the whole picture of what happened um, during those four days of the protests. So having those different perspectives balances out um, any sort of bias or anything like that because it it really shows what the perspective of each side of the argument was and um, I guess the argument would be um, were the shootings justified which um, it might have to be worded a bit better but that's the general gist um, were the National Guard was the National Guard um, you know justified in doing what they did so that would be a question for students to explore. Um, what are some difficulties that students might face while reading? So students may, um, or <laughs> students may experience modal and tactical difficulties while reading this book because just because of the way it's formatted. So I'll show you guys here. So it's formatted almost like a conversation between the different perspectives. So it's not like a normal book where it's line after line after line. It's one character talking, then another one talking, and then, and um, so it's kind of formed maybe like a text message. I would probably tell my students, think of it as um, a book of text messages. And I think that could really help understand, you know, how to read this book. And um, I guess another hard part about it is that you don't really, it, the book doesn't tell you who's speaking for each line. You kind of have to figure it out yourself based on what the character is saying, what the line is saying, and it jumps back and forth. 
um, between the three different perspectives. And so that could get a bit confusing with students, but um, one way that I would um, try to help with this difficulty is, well, first to start off, before even reading this book, I would do a timeline activity with students. So there's this article that goes over the whole timeline of events um, of what happened in, in May of 1970 on the Kent State campus. So I think that could really give students a background knowledge of what this book is going to be about, what the different perspectives are, who was involved, what the issue was. And I think that could really help with understanding the format of this book and just how to um, just go about reading it really. And um, so that would be ex my exo scaffold um, sort of thing would be that um, starter text, which is the, the timeline uh, article. So then also for endo text, what I would do is while, so I would plan on reading the book as a class. So either me reading it to the students or having the students take turns reading lines. But um, while we're reading, I would take moments where I would ask my students um, who they think the speaker of the lines that we are reading are. So I would ask them, okay, so who do you think said, you know, this section? And based on context clues, like, who do you think said it? And um, I would also have them explain how they know and why they think that it is, um, why they think it is that perspective that is um, the speaker of that line. And I think that could really help um, kind of just organize in their heads, like who's talking here and that sort of thing. And then meta talk, we're going to talk about that later um, for my next activity. So the specific activity that I would want to do is a, um, a civil discourse activity. So what would happen is it would be a class debate. So I would assign students um, each a role. So um, the three roles we would have are the students slash protesters, the National Guard and the townies, which um, are the people living in Kent, Ohio during this time. And uh, students would form groups, um, you know, based on who they were assigned to play. And they'll use the book and also the starter text to build the argument around was were the shootings justified? Or um, I guess somewhere along the lines of just um, what their perspective is and what their argument is against or for what happened uh, that day on May 4th. So um, they would argue from the point of view of that um, perspective that they were assigned with their groups um, about the event. And I think that would be a really good way to practice civil discourse because this is a very emotional topic and it's very controversial and I think this would be really good practice for students to understand different points of views but also res or respecting other points of views but also being able to argue their own again in a respectful way so I think this would be really good practice um also um this would also count as an assessment but actually let me talk about the meta talk first actually so um, after we have our discussion, I would hold a, um, a class discussion about um, how it felt playing these different perspectives and how it made them feel and um, just what they thought about it in general. And then also I would ask them how they think an event like this can both divide or unite communities. So this would um, match with the standard 7.C.1.1. Um, um, explain how culture unites and divides modern societies and regions. So in this case, culture would be, um, you know, the protesters because they have their own culture, the townies who have their own culture, and the National Guard, I guess, who have their own culture. So those cultures um, refer to the different characters and perspectives um, of this event. So... Um, yeah, so they would, um, we would have a class discussion about how they think an event like this would, um, could either divide or unite a community and how. So I guess um, uniting communities, it could be, um, you know, after the shootings, all the different perspectives coming together and 
talking it out and I guess finding some sort of peace with the situation or communities being um, even just the protesters being one community um, uniting them and you know helping each other through this hard time of losing um, very close classmates or um, dividing uh, obviously this um, this event divided the townies and the National Guard and the the protesters because there's a lack of trust on all of those sides. So that was something that students would explore during that um, during that uh, discussion. And I was thinking another thing that we could do is um, as another assessment, we could have students choose another perspective that they weren't already assigned in the first discussion and they could have some sort of presentation where they talk about um, how that perspective differs from the one that they argued in the debate or even how they feel about that perspective or um, just or even just argue argue about the event or was it justified was were the shootings justified they could argue it from that um, that new point of view that they hadn't already done and I think that would give them a really good look at all the different perspectives that were in play during this event and I think that this book is just amazing in general and I I would really recommend it and I would absolutely love to teach it in my classroom so I'm really hoping that I get the approval because um, it's an amazing book and it has so many different things that students can learn from and just connect it to their own worlds. I mean this book is just it's just so culturally relevant to today with all the different themes in it and the situation. It's it's very um, relevant to what students are seeing on the news, um, you know, now even. It's just, um, yeah, 50 years later, the these um, issues are still part of our society. And I think it's really important for students to see um, all the different ways that this issue can manifest itself. So um, yeah, I really hope you guys approve this book. Um, very excited to teach it. Thanks for listening.